When Quake World dropped in 96, it set a new standard how online multiplayer games communicate. Besides pioneering the client-side prediction, the id Software team came up with a clever method to effectively utilize UDP, an unreliable but lightweight communication protocol, to reliably transfer critical data. This innovation set the cornerstones for what would become an industry standard technique, leveraging UDP to make online multiplayer gaming possible. First, let's understand why did id Software decide to use UDP instead of a more reliable protocol like TCP. Since we are talking about a first-person shooter game, we have to keep in mind that most information that is not received in a timely manner is not worth resending. So the main criteria in this case is speed. So let's take a look at the pros and cons of TCP and UDP. Establishing a connection. TCP requires a three-way handshake to establish a connection before data transmission begins. UDP sends data directly without establishing a connection. This saves time. Acknowledgements. TCP requires each packet or block of data to be acknowledged by the receiver, introducing additional round-trip delays. UDP does not require acknowledgements, allowing data to flow continuously without waiting for responses. Packet loss handling. TCP retransmits lost packets. UDP ignores packet loss and continues sending data without retransmission. This provides faster delivery at the expense of reliability. Header size. TCP has a minimum header size of 20 bytes. UDP has a header size of 8 bytes. Now, during the research for this video, I also found a post from John Carmack from December 97 where he stated the following. Anyone who suggests using TCP for a real-time game does not understand understand how their error recovery works. Ok, so finally UDP was selected and in order to make the communication more reliable, they had to add another layer on top of the UDP protocol, the Quake Net Channel. Now let's talk about the network stack. Quake's communication system is based on so-called commands. Commands contain information updates about player position, orientation, health, damage and so on. Furthermore, a command can contain data marked as reliable or unreliable. Now, now, instead of putting the commands as payload directly into a UDP packet, they decided to proceed it with the Quake Net Channel header and then encapsulate the UDP packet into IP packets. Ok, now let's take a look at the elements of the Net Channel header. This is a section from the original Quake World source code. So the Net Channel header has the following elements. Sequence is a counter that's being incremented each time a packet is sent. This allows to keep track of packets. Reliability bit, this bit indicates if the payload contains reliability reliable or unreliable data. X sequence is equal to the last sequence number received. X received indicates the even or odd messages. Q port, this has been introduced in 97 as a workaround for a bug related to the UDP port. We will talk about this later. After the header comes the command, the actual payload. Now let's take a look how all of this works together during the communication. Unreliable commands are grouped into a UDP packet and sent. It does not matter if these messages get lost. Reliable Reliable commands, on the other hand, require strict handling. When a new reliable command comes in, it's first added to the message buffer. If the reliable buffer is empty, the command is transferred to it. Now the net channel header is added. If there is still available space, the rest of the payload is filled up with unreliable messages from the message buffer. All of this is then added to a UDP packet. The UDP packet is then encapsulated in an IP packet and then sent to the receiving side. The receiving side parses it. The incoming sequence number is given to the new outgoing sequence ECK along with a flag indicating that a packet contained reliable data. Now, when the sender receives the sequence ECK and if the reliable flag is true, the packet counts as received. The sender then clears the reliable buffer and new commands can be sent. If it is false, the packet will be resent from the reliable buffer. In the meantime, new commands accumulate in the message buffer. If it overflows, the client is dropped. As you can see, the communication was designed in such a way that there can only be one reliable message unacknowledged between the sender and receiver. Ok, let's now take a look at the Q port. The Q port was added later on in a patch as a bug fix. I found this very interesting message from John Carmack explaining his thought process why they added the Q port. I could fix it completely by including a sort of port number in each message and having the servers match and update the UDP ports based on that. That would work fine, but at the cost of adding a byte or two to everyone's packets to help out people with bad routers. You wouldn't be able to tell a difference, but that's the principle of it. 
I don't know about you, but I really like reading some code and then reading the rationale behind it, when the developers explain the thought process and why they did something in the way they did. Okay, so that's it for today. If you liked the video, hit like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Tariq 10x.